Hi, Misha here, and this is episode three, the Force Ghost of Star Wars Future, and I uh, put out one and two a few days ago and had intended to put out three on Saturday, but I didn't, even though that was my schedule. For one, I was busy doing other things. Two, I was tired, didn't really feel like it. And three, I didn't really know what I wanted to say. I still needed to think about Rise of Skywalker more. I just wasn't prepared. And I mention this because I put off this part until I felt I was reasonably ready. Which is exactly what Disney should have done with the quote-unquote sequel trilogy. They obviously, as we know now, didn't have a plan, or at least not a firm enough one. They really didn't know what they wanted to do, aside from, hey, we spent over $4 billion on this franchise, and we need a return as quick as possible. And it worked well with Force Awakens. It also worked with Last Jedi, at least on a financial level. And it worked fine with Rogue One, but Solo, not so much. And uh, Rise of Skywalker, who knows? Um, who knows? Uh, George Lucas was always good about taking his time. After Return of the Jedi... You know, originally he was thinking about jumping right in and doing the prequels as early as 86, 87. But he didn't feel it. He was exhausted after Jedi. He took time off over a decade till he felt ready. Excellent. And it honestly worked very well for the franchise. It um, gave, gave it all time to die down. It gave it time to be special. To let nostalgia build, let people move on to other things. And then, as I said in my other video, it was a slow burn as it, um, as it came back. I don't know. I have no answer. I definitely think the whole five films in five years thing was way too rushed. Star Wars has always been best in moderation. And, um, it's always had a certain vision. Typically, George Lucas was a little too grandiose for his own good. And, of course, the man wanted money. Of course he did. His merchandising is evidence of that. What a genius move that he did with the toys and merchandising. Also, I love space balls. But anyway, I mean, Mel Brooks plus... Star Wars? I mean, good, good grief. How can you go wrong? Even got John Hurt to come back for it. But, um... Great move. But at the same time, he didn't sacrifice his artistic vision. I mean, he, you know, his whole thing with the Screenwriters Guild and all that, his controversy about not putting credits at the first of the film, he sacrificed to do the films the way he wanted, at least with the first film and the prequels. For better or worse with the prequels, you can argue, but he had a plot, he had a vision, and by God, he stuck to it. And you have to respect that, if nothing else. I'm not going to say Disney's was a cash grab. I mean, a business is there to make money. But it was also designed by committee but only halfway. Force Awakens and Rise of Skywalker were Last Jedi. The middle one was just kind of thrown out to left field to see what would happen. I definitely get what they were going for. You know, and I can do more detailed videos on that, but... it's. I think it's a lot of factors. And I... I as I said in the other video, too, my, my wife is not American. She doesn't get Star Wars. And most people outside of the U.S. don't. People like to say, oh, it's this global phenomenon. It's really not. It is very much an American thing. And only an American thing for a certain generation. 
it was a phenomenon in the 70s and 80s. And then the prequels did come back and became a kind of a meme phenomenon in a different way. But I think the prequels, especially Phantom Menace, benefited from early internet. That really was uh, kind of a key part of that whole thing. This is a different time. The way people consume media now is different. This is, you know, in, in the 80s, we were still in the Cold War era. Vietnam was a recent memory. World War II wasn't that far back in the 90s. And at least for the, you know, the Phantom Menace and when the, um, when the Attack of the Clones was being made, 9-11 had not happened yet. The war in Afghanistan hadn't happened. The war in Iraq was in the future. Of course, by 2002, when Attack of the Clones came out, a couple of those events had happened, but the film had already been well into production by that point. You can see the impact in the change in America on Revenge of the Sith. And it worked well because of the darker tone of the film. Now you're kind of living in this era where things are different. I don't... I don't know, I see people making this mistake that if something was popular, profitable in the past, it will just automatically be so in the future, and that's not, it's not a given. I don't know that Star Wars will speak to the next generation. I'm not them. I know that it's important to my generation because we grew up with it. And we shared in it. We played together, you know, toys and a lot of people played video games together, whatever. There was a connection there that Star Wars facilitated. It's not doing that now. <sighs> the future. Is there one? I can't help but think all weekend about the Back to the Future trilogy. No pun intended. I honestly liked all three. I think number two is my favorite. Yeah, and that, uh, interestingly, my wife does love Back to the Future. That honestly seems to have more global endurance than Star Wars. And they've kept it. They didn't do prequels. They haven't done sequels yet. Please, God, don't. They kept it something special. Now, of course, they've done limited editions and re-releases and, and things, but I can't help but think that Star Wars should have just been kept that way. Just let it be. On the other hand, I do... And I'm talking more about the main Skywalker saga, as they call it now. On the other hand, I do think doing offshoot films, or even better, maybe TV shows. It seems like lately, with The Clone Wars and now The Mandalorian, that maybe TV or episodic type stuff is more the future not big blockbuster films because you can really dig into the characters and really get into plot with that and with streaming now I don't know it just it's might be the better way to go but anyway I, I my point is don't focus on the main go forward in time go back in time heck even be in the same time period but to go somewhere else it's, it's a freaking galaxy it's not a narrow window of what you can do if you're not narrow-minded. But what Disney, Lucasfilm's going to have to do are take risks. If they're unwilling to take risks, if they're just going to keep trying to play it safe, they will wear it down to nothing and it will be truly inconsequential. On the other hand, I think some fans have really blown the importance of Star Wars. Way out of proportion. Talking about the mythos and the, the blah blah blah. It's fantasy science fiction. The mythos has always been fluid. It doesn't matter. It's, it's fiction. 
Fiction will change. And they get hung up on these small little things. I'm sorry, but the original trilogy, and certainly the prequels, have tons of quote-unquote plot holes and new devices. The difference is when the plot is engaging and the characters likable and interesting, we don't care. Even Back to the Future has some plot holes and things. But we don't care because, you know, Marty and Doc Brown are just awesome. And, I don't know. The new... The new trilogy, and I was afraid of this even with Force Awakens, it has too much going on. They try to get in all the old characters, great. Then they try to introduce all the new characters at once. And the thing is, I think everyone likes Finn. And I think a lot of people liked Poe. I think there's nothing inherently wrong with Rey. But how do you introduce these three new characters, plus Kylo Ren... Who turned out actually to be probably the most interesting character, to be fair. And I think we always knew that was p potentially possible. Uh, Snoke, BB-8, yada yada. Meanwhile, trying to reintroduce us to Han, Leia, Luke, Chewie, C-3PO, R2-D2. Then we have other kind of ancillary characters like Maz Kanata and Lando and the chick from Jurassic Park and it's too much it's too many characters I mean look at the original trilogy even the prequels there were lots of secondary characters to make the universe feel big that you could flesh out in books comics video games you know Mon Mothman is a great example Admiral Atbar they were there you knew they did something but they were there just to support the main characters in both of the trilogies there you had half a dozen central characters, not even that. And it gave them time to grow. Even when we got to know the prequel characters a lot better than we did the sequel characters. I can say what how I would have done it. Maybe I'll do separate videos on how I would have done... It might be kind of fun how I would have done the prequels, how I would have done the sequels. Because I, I think the bones were there. I think the prequels had a good plot. At least promising. I think the sequels had good characters. The problem is the prequels had crap characters, very not even two-dimensional, one-dimensional, and the sequels had no plot, no focus, no aim. They had characters and a few notes they wanted to hit, but nothing more. So where do we go from here? I mean, I don't know. I would stick with TV shows or other kind of media for a while, let things cool off. From there, I don't, I've just, I'm, I'm hard pressed to, to think of any of the younger group. I mean, they, they, they've tried so hard with the sequel trilogy to draw in young people. Are they interested? I don't think so. I, I don't think the younger crowd. They 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 intentionally kind of, I don't want to say alienated, but they they intentionally tried to focus on getting younger people, knowing it would cost them some older fans. But the problem is, they lost older fans and didn't really acquire any younger people. I, I don't know. I mean, it just seems like they did. Again, it, it's by committee. Yeah, everything's by committee, by marketing studies. It feels like they've done all the graphs and, and the questionnaires and they've looked at all the numbers, but what they forgot is the humanity, the people. This that that zeitgeist, the feeling. They've they've just they've they boiled it all down as bureaucrats want to do. And that's what they feels like, just some bureaucratic mess. And that's a shame, but Oh, well. Again, I'm not deeply emotionally invested. I think one interesting thing, critics aren't liking Rise of Skywalker. That's no surprise. It's interesting to me that it seems like more Star Trek-oriented people are much more positive on it than Star Wars-oriented people. But I think Star Wars-oriented people have been so 
disillusioned lately that it, it, it couldn't. And and frankly, after Last Jedi, yeah, it was it, it just couldn't happen. I, and everyone knew this. Most of all, J.J. Abrams, I'm sure. I know the task he was given. I, heck, I know writing these sequel trilogies was tough as hell. Because you want to get new fans in, you want to be modern, but you want to you want to get that last thing. And they go, well, look, we, we tried going kind of with the soft reboot for Force Awakens. People complained. We went with a whole new left field direction with Last Jedi. People complained. Then they throw their hands up in the air and say, oh, you're impossible to please. True. But you know what else is true? You fuckers are getting millions of dollars in your pocket. You know, I will spend two hours on the phone answering questions with a person to sell them a gun to make a hundred dollars. You're making fucking millions. You know what? Deal with it. Come out of left field, but also give nostalgia. It's not rocket science. If we could get to the moon in under a decade... If we could develop computers like we've done, you can do it or you step down. Don't take the paycheck. If you take the money, look at athletes. They get paid millions, but some of them make amazing athletic feats. And they sweat for it. It's not an easy job. They sacrifice for it. If you can do that, then yeah, sure, be a writer, director, actor in Hollywood. If you can't, don't. Go sell insurance. Go be a real estate agent. I don't know. Do something that doesn't require you to be creative. Because that's what's happening. We're, we're losing creative talent left and right. And the same thing goes for, for actors. It's just, the talent's just going away because of what's going on now. I said in my last video, I think Hollywood itself is more of the problem than Star Wars. And I, I stand by that. Because this is happening all across the board with tons of different franchises. <sighs> Do we want there to be a future? Mm. I mean, in time. In anything in time. But... Yeah, I don't know. It's hard for me to say because I just don't care anymore. I just don't. They didn't move the story ahead at all. They just reset. And there, there's nothing wrong with resetting occasionally because history is cyclic. But oh, there's just so many ways they could have done it better. In so few ways, they could have done it worse. But that's what happens when you design anything by committee. You get mediocrity. And at the end of the day, that's what I feel the sequel trilogy has been. The prequels, <laughs> for better or worse, were not mediocre. They were either memorably good, usually with special effects and stuff, or memorably bad, usually with dialogue. But they were memorable. I think the future for the sequel trilogy is just forgotten. You know, we've seen this in other things, like the different eras of James Bond. Certain Bond periods are just swept away. We just, we just kind of forget about them. And it's not just Star Wars. I mean, uh, look what they've done with Lord of the Rings. They, they had a, three great movies, and then they decided to try to turn the shortest book into three movies, and that worked out so fantastic. Of course, they've done it with Harry Potter, which was never exactly my jam. I'm a little too old for that. I've seen the movies, of course, read the books, but, okay, you get you did eight movies, great. And then they did these, they're doing these new ones now that I don't, they're just, they're just there. They exist. That, that's it. Uh, Star Trek, I think the main problem with Star Trek 9, Star Trek's always best as a series. The movies have always been very hit or miss. I think if you'd had that cast and you just kind of done a new series, I think instead of doing, doing the 2009 movie and then trying to do Discovery, obviously they wanted to do a, a, 
a series set in that period, why not just do a recasting of the original series? Redo the original series. Redo it. Because you could use, you know, if you have a series, you can have plenty of time to grow the characters. You can revisit original episodes, give them a new twist. You can do brand new episodes, you know, kind of mix them in. Whatever. Have some fun. Yeah. But when you try to do it as when you try to introduce Star Trek as a movie, it, it didn't work. Ultimately, and I do mean ultimately, years from now, it might be cool if Hollywood gets its creative edge back. Just throwing this out there. To just redo Star Wars from the get go. Redo Maybe do like a Netflix or an Amazon or whatever thing at the time. Series, miniseries, whatever. But just redo them all at once. Do the, the original trilogy again. Do the prequels again. And then you can continue, continue on from there. I don't know. But I'm talking a long time in the future. It would kind of be interesting to see a, a new take on things. But in the end, I I just don't really think it's that relevant anymore. I think it, it had its time. Had two times, really, if you count the prequels. So that's pretty good, more than most franchises get. But franchises can't always last forever. It's just kind of the way of the world sometimes, guys. Things are always better when you're a kid in some senses. And Star Wars is kind of one of those things. That's not bad. That's just how it is. Don't know. Don't get really worked up about it, I guess, though. And as a kid, I was about as big of a fan as anyone. As an adult, I'm around, but I'm also an adult. I have a job, I have a wife, I have a family. I have other concerns in my life. So, for me, it is what it is. It is what it is. But I think series are a good way to go forward for Star Star Trek or Star Wars for a while. Just kind of let things die down, let people get over themselves cuz that's one nice thing about the internet. Give them 6 months or a year and yeah, they'll move on to other targets. And I hate to say it, because I, I love the generation of actors I grew up watching and stuff, but they keep bringing back all these old actors to do new series. Once they're gone, either retired or passed away, they won't be able to do that anymore. Then they'll have to bring in new talent. They can't just keep riding nostalgia, and that'll be the best thing ever to move series franchises forward. And I think if they really get in that mindset of let's do something new, there's a lot of potentiality in Star Wars. It really is. Thousands of planets you can have. 20,000 years of history. You can always have a descendant of Skywalker and Ancestor. You can always have the Sith, the Jedi. Always have our species we like. Wookies can have droids, but also you can do something new. You can have that touchstone without getting too bogged down in it. That's one thing Star Trek 2009 did all right. They had Leonard Nimoy and his old Spock to kind of pass the torch off, but they didn't have what was left at the time of the original cast to kind of bogged down the new cast. So at least most of what you saw on screen were the new cast. And that's kind of... I think they were sort of doing that with Force Awakens by not getting Luke in because I knew Luke would overshadow the new people. But that's a sequel trilogy. If you're going to do, quote, Episode 7, you need the original cast. Now, if you want to have new people, great. Do something like Rogue One. But, yeah, just my thoughts. Don't really know. It'll be uh, Christmas tomorrow, so that's a thing. 
and New Year, and yeah. Long story short, Rise of Skywalker is a thing. I think it'll be mostly a forgettable thing. I don't see really how they could have done a whole lot better, frankly. But as I was saying at the beginning of this video, I wasn't ready to do it a few days ago, so I didn't do it. I think they should have done that with this. And I get it, they wanted a trilogy, but it's clear they needed at least two movies. They should have just said nuts with tradition and broken it. But I also know that would have gotten backlash. They were really in an impossible corner. They want to do this whole tradition thing and they have a timetable. Again, corporation. If this had been a single person like George Lucas, if he had not been ready, or if he needed a fourth film, damn it, he would have just done it. Into hell with the consequences. Man loved himself some J Jar Jar. And he, he put Jar Jar in despite everything else. Oh, God bless him. <laughs> and that's what we need. We need someone who's willing to sacrifice for a vision. We may not always agree with the vision, but at least we can respect that there is a vision. And I think that if Star Wars is going to have a future, it has to have that. If it doesn't, eh, it'll just be one of those failed things. They, they love running things into the ground lately, so eh, let them do it, I guess. Hollywood for you, huh, guys? For as much money as they get paid, I think some of them should actually have to work a real job for once. And again, I'm not trying to put down what they do. I know it's hard work. And they're in a position where everything they do and say gets scrutinized by people that think they know better. And you have to realize, we don't know all the situations. For example, with the sequel trilogy, I have no doubt that a directive came on from, you know, down from all high to get rid, kill off the original people. That just seems, at least, you know, Luke, Han, Leia. That seems like something that they shoehorned in in every film. Of course, with Carrie Fisher, they had to. But I think even if she were still alive today she would have been killed off in Episode 9. And that, this seems like that was their notion. Kill each character off in one episode. And you know what? We kind of like that as fans. We like to see the end of an arc. But it was just so forced and flat the way it was done. Very unnatural. But that's what happens when you have design by committee. When you have this, we have to do this. We have to do that. And you kind of saw that with Lucas and the prequels because he had to. You know, he had to have the fight between Anakin and Kenobi. He had to have the rise of the Empire. So it kind of backed him into a corner. With the uh, Empire Strikes Back, they didn't have to do anything. And it's probably why it's the most free-flowing film of them all. Yeah. I'll talk more about it in other videos, I'm sure. But I just wanted to do this for you guys for Christmas. I appreciate you tuning in. If you could like, share, and subscribe. I also hope you enjoyed the uh, the blooper reel that I put up as kind of a Christmas gift from the Mishiko channel. I might try to do that once in a while as other weird little clips uh, kind of pop up, you know. Alrighty, guys. Well, you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, I'll probably get back to doing more model videos pretty soon now. I will catch you very soon next time.